Uh, all right, everybody. So uh, I just wanted to welcome to you. This is about the fourth or fifth year that we've done fire talks. This is the fourth year that we've run it. Um, uh, for those that don't know me, I'm Rex. I work for a large DOD contractor during the day, and I like to play at night on my website, www.dvtech.com. So there's my plug. Okay, so you know, the first question is, you know, what are fire talks? So these are basically 15 minute talks, and it's an alternative to the 30 or 60 minute. And kind of the whole philosophy is what I found in a lot of the longer talks, such as the one that Jason from the street is. You know, <laughs> wow, I'm just kidding. Uh, there's there's a lot of background that, that they build up and then they show the real good stuff at the end. So the idea with the 15 minute theme is you just have 15 minutes and you basically gotta you know jump right to the meat of your content. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna judge and vote the best uh, talk and these both go these both go on. You know, we're having them tonight. Right now, and it's Saturday, they're going to start uh, whatever time. What, what, what was it, 6 30? So they're going to start tomorrow at 6 30. So we have six presentations tonight, and we're going to have six presentations tomorrow. Um, so this is just a little bit of history. So this is actually a picture of the first fire talks. Um, you know, there were a lot of people that set it up, such as Michael, Santar, Angelo, or Catalyst, and also Mubix. And I think Chris Gates was also involved in it as well, as well as many others. So this, the actual fire talks were held at the end of a hallway. Um, and so, and about the only, uh -oh. okay, there we go. About the only highlight that I can re remember from that was Jack Daniel did this ad hoc talk, and it was the inaugural presentation of his sock puppets. So, Jack, where are you? So, all right, there he is. Maybe he can do a reprise. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> uh, so then we had 2010, which is Snowmageddon. Um, so we had a lot of last minute changes, but in the end, everything worked out. 2011, 2012 went awesome. So now we're up to 2013. Just, just wanted to mention and just give a big thank. Thanks to all the volunteers, so that Jack Daniel, Sarah Clark, uh, Jason Oliver, and Nappy were helping with uh, selecting all the talks that we had uh, recording. We also have Iron Geek over here, so these presentations or these sessions are going to be on his site probably. Well, they're probably there like right now, but okay. he somehow went forward in time and just came back or some, something. Um, so we have a timer and security, uh, you know, do we really have, okay. Are the security people here? All right, every, every, everybody's watching, oh, awesome, okay. So security people just make sure that everybody has a badge. Um, kind of forgot that one. Okay, so th th this is our quick schedule. Uh, um, Thin slicing black swan. I have no idea what that's about. So then we're gonna get. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> it's some abstract reference. Um, so then we're gonna get the smart code pen test framework. So yeah, it's gonna be Georgia, and then Tom Steele is gonna be talking about Squid Shell, which looks awesome. Rogue Clown, where is she? There she is, back right there. So she's going to be giving a nice quick talk on how to use capture flags. Joe Klein. All right, so he's going to be doing some IPv6. Or no, no, this is a time. <laughs> no IPv6. <laughs> and then the last one is uh, this is Wendy Nather is going to be talking about, and she's right there, and she's going to be talking about. This is going to be a very interesting talk. So anyway. Uh, so, without further ado, we're going to start with the presentation. Michelle. Um, but I am 
Michelle Trevorka, a senior network security engineer and blogger. I have a podcast called Healthy Paranoia, because sometimes they really are out to get you. Um, my top, I usually speak on topics like effective neuroscience and the psychology of decision making. Uh, Ron Breck, my research partner, is formally trained in uh, theoretical syntax. He has a master's in linguistics. He specializes in W3C semantic web RDF technology. He's written a book on RDF. Um, he's probably one of the five people that actually understand it. Okay, um, I'm sure everybody. <laughs> Some other kind of symptom that gave the impression they might be at risk of a heart attack. 
And the doctors could not reliably, above just the basic chance factor, decide whether or not they were actually going to have a heart attack. It's a public hospital, they have limited resources. So there's a, a, a cardiologist named Lee Goldman who had created a protocol based upon an algorithm developed in partnership with some mathematicians. Cook County Hospital decided to implement this, this technique, and after two years of using a decision tree, hospital staff were 70% more effective at recognizing patients at risk. This is a situation where less information led to greater success, and I'd like you to re remember that every time you walk into a hospital, they're dealing with highly, highly complex problems. You go to the emergency room, they're not, okay, what's your history? Oh wait, no, we need to get a little more data about the kind of you know, problem this is. They're triaging you, they're getting you into an emergency as soon as possible. This is how first responders do it every day. This is an example of the typical green and mare uh, fast and frugal tree. Um, on, the, on the left, A, you see that's a typical uh, cardiac care fast and frugal tree. On the right, that's for determining whether or not somebody should get bail. That's how it's been applied. Basically, a fast and frugal tree is different than a full decision tree like as the ones that NASA used. The ones that NASA uses are information greedy. A fast and frugal tree is comprised of a search rule, a stopping rule, so the search rule looks up the factors of importance. The stopping rule stops the search if a factor allows it, and then the decision rule classifies the object according to this factor. It's a way to codify intuition that's informed by empirical data. So, Ron and I uh, came up with an application uh, the, we decided to use some semantic web technologies, the resource description framework. Um, what I found interesting was the, this is a triple, these are two triples actually, in, in RDF, and it looks, uh, an edge looks very much like a fast and frugal tree. Um, they're based on, it's object oriented, it's based on relationships or mental associations. What we did was we used packet captures um, and the graphs treat each packet from a capture file as a discrete event with properties. The TCP header info is in a metadata model. Um, it's an attempt to replicate human cognitive economy. Um, it, we put this in a, in a virtuoso database which uses Sparkle. Um, so we used the Sparkle query language for, in order to traverse these large data sets while capturing similarities. Um, if you don't know RDF, it's basically subject, predicate, object. Subject defines the event, predicate defines a characteristic of that event, and the object contains the actual value. Okay, this is supposed to be an animated slide. Let's we'll see if it works. There you go. Here is the pseudocode for that. Subject, predicate, object. It's basically SQL, but slightly enhanced. So there's event one, there's the property of event one source that we're looking for, and then we report on it. Here's an example of uh, all source IPs and their destination IPs for each source, count how many times it went to a destination, report source, destination, and count. Um, it also has a web interface, uh, Virtuoso, and that gives you an idea um, it's, hard, it's a bit hard to see, but it shows you the, uh, I think it should show you the return time, how long it took to uh, respond for that query. It's very incredibly, incredibly fast. So, uh, we can't fight all the unknowns, and I think that's the shift that has to happen. As I mentioned, we're, we have an open world problem where there's information, a lot of information that we don't know. And when you have complex problems, Complex solutions are great in hindsight, but not in foresight, in prediction. Not a complex solution. So we need to focus on building good, strong infrastructures that minimize technical debt. We need to make sure we have defense in depth and we have airbags. Recognize the limitation of IDS and signatures, and investigate the creation of real-time fast and frugal trees. Right now, I sort of feel like our patient is dying on the table. Um, 
I know this was a lot to take in. Does anybody, if I have some time, does anybody have any questions? Are we done? Or I have five minutes? Three minutes. Three minutes. Does anybody have any questions about our implementation? Yes? So far, we're, it's in its infancy. It's very complicated to take uh, semantic web technology and apply it to packet captures. Ideally, I would like to see uh, more of a JDL fusion model where we take lots of data in from multiple resources, not just packet captures. What I'm trying to do is look for patterns that could be a sort of fast and frugal tree. Does that make sense? And I'm right now we're still at the exploratory stages. We're, you know, the, the Sparkle queries don't always work the way that we expect. Um, but you know, I. I guess that's what that's what you do, right? You, you don't know what you're going to get when you try to take such divergent things and put them together. Yes. Yes, I, right now one of our biggest problems is getting data sets, large data sets, and uh, we need them to be tagged and I want to do side-by-side -side comparisons. I'd like to have the same data set use the traditional technology, use our technology, hope and see how well we do at finding the same thing. Because we're trying to also build an impoverished query, the least you know, the smallest number of parameters that give you, because we don't need to know the, oh, this is this kind of type of attack. What we want to know is bad. This is worse, this is not so bad, this is the worst. So I want to actually have a fast and frugal tree as much as possible. I mean, it sounds, I, I know this sounds a little probably pine in the sky to try to hope for that, but that's, that's my desire. I'm sorry? I mean, right now our error percentage is probably sort of 50 percent. We're just not we're we're not getting those queries quite right, and we don't have enough data to really. We have we're working with really old data sets from like 10 years ago because that's all we get. Yeah. I'm sorry. Do a lot of meta analysis on data. Yeah, and it's taking a lot of time and it, it, time that you know our day jobs don't necessarily get us to do. Yes. You know, I, the, I knew that was going to come up, and uh, no, I, ideally, I mean, how do you teach a machine to use heuristics? I mean, it, like, a, a real heuristic, smart heuristics of jumping to conclusions and take the best, all those kinds of, you know, really simple heuristics. I, I don't know. I, I'm looking for research partners, so if, you, if you're interested, please let me know in, in a way to get a better application of this. This is, you know, a first run, so. Um, thank you, I appreciate it. You can, uh, here's my blog and podcast. You can, uh,